Last time we discussed the possibility of UFO existence and whether life exists in the universe. In fact, our ultimate goal is to answer the question, do UFOs carrying extraterrestrials actually exist on Earth? In our previous session, we acknowledged the possibility of UFO existence and also mentioned that these UFOs are unrelated to squids. Therefore, we concluded that UFOs clearly exist and life undoubtedly exists as well. We calculated this probability of life existence last time using the concept of the Goldilocks zone. Today's topic is, does intelligent life, not just simple life forms, exist in the universe? First, let's revisit the possibility of life existence based on the Goldilocks zone we discussed last time. Though we didn't go into detail last time, let's explore the Goldilocks zone more deeply. The Goldilocks zone refers to the range of distances from a star where a planet can maintain liquid water. This zone's range differs for sun-like stars and red dwarfs. For sun-like stars, it's estimated that about 20 to 50% have planets within the Goldilocks zone, while red dwarfs, despite having a narrower zone, are expected to have about 70% with Goldilocks zone planets. The detailed mechanisms are complex, so we'll skip them. Overall, we can estimate that about 30% of all star systems have a Goldilocks zone. More precisely, according to NASA's research findings, 2018 Kepler mission data, 22.3% of G-type stars, sun-like, 15.5% of M-type stars, red dwarfs, 24.1% of all stars were found to have Goldilocks zones, 95% confidence level, plus or minus 5% margin of error. In other words, at a 95% confidence level, research indicates that between 19% minimum, and 29% maximum of stars have planets within the Goldilocks zone. For detailed measurement methods, please refer to the original paper, published in 2018. In any case, we'll proceed with calculations using a rough estimate of about 30%. Now, logically speaking, we need to consider two key stages. First, we must examine the probability of life emerging on these Goldilocks zone planets. Second, we need to assess how many of these life-bearing planets maintain sufficient stability for evolution to occur. In other words, life would certainly emerge. But for it to evolve, the planet's atmosphere must remain stable. Let's set the time frame at 1 billion years. We now need two key values. First, we must calculate the number of Goldilocks zones, which we already covered last time. Next, we need to predict the probability of life emerging in these Goldilocks zones, and then estimate the likelihood of maintaining stable conditions. I'll reference the latest research on this. In 2014, researchers Wordsworth and Pierre Humbert developed a life emergence model to estimate these probabilities. There's also other relevant research. In 2020, Sasolov and his team re-examined RNA formation probabilities. To summarize their conclusions, the probability of life emerging in a Goldilocks zone is approximately 15% conservatively, with about 5% standard deviation, meaning an absolute minimum of 10%. The optimistic estimate is 40%, plus or minus 10% standard deviation. At maximum optimism, it reaches 50%. Let's remember these figures. The probability of life emerging in a Goldilocks zone ranges from 10%, conservative, to 50% optimistic. But mere emergence of life isn't enough. This emerging life needs stable conditions for evolution over time. These standards are also based on recent research findings. While there are multiple studies, the conclusion is that the probability of maintaining stable atmospheric conditions for 1 billion years of evolutionary development is about 10% conservatively and 30% optimistically. All these figures come from actual published papers they're not arbitrary numbers I've created. I'm simply presenting already established research results. Now we can estimate how many intelligent life forms might exist. For this, we applied Monte Carlo simulation, a method based on random sampling. Those familiar with the method already know it's widely used, not just in engineering, but also in economics. It's a methodology employed across numerous academic fields that rely on statistical analysis. Let's analyze how many planets might host life forms with at least monkey-level intelligence under conservative and optimistic scenarios. Calculating with the various figures mentioned earlier, multiplying the number of Goldilocks zone planets by the probability of life emergence and then by stability probability, we find that conservatively, there would be about 0.015 planets per galaxy with intelligent life. Optimistically, this number rises to 1,125 planets per galaxy. The crucial point here is per galaxy, 
our universe contains an unimaginable number of galaxies. Even conservatively, this leads to a conclusion that about 30 billion planets in the entire universe could host life forms with monkey-level intelligence. Adjusting between conservative and optimistic results, with Goldilocks zone probability at 30%, life emergence at 10%, billion-year stability at 20%, and evolution to monkey intelligence at 0.01%, all research-backed figures, at 95% confidence level with 2.1 standard deviation, we estimate an average of 3.5 planets per galaxy might develop monkey-level intelligence. Multiply this by the number of galaxies, and the numbers become staggering. At the most conservative estimate, about 200 billion planets could develop monkey-level intelligence. Applying all optimistic parameters, this reaches 200 trillion across the universe. More astonishing than you imagined, right? This explains why scientists consider life must exist in the universe as fundamental knowledge. But let's go further. What about life forms intelligent enough to develop spacecraft? Two key factors emerge. First, sufficient time for brain development is needed. Second, whether mass extinction occurs before reaching that technological level. The detailed calculations are complex, but referencing multiple studies suggests the probability of evolving from monkey level to spacecraft building intelligence is about 10 to the power of negative 6, 1 in a million. This means for every million monkey intelligence civilizations, one might develop spacecraft technology. Even at this probability, given the universe's scale, we arrive at a conclusion of about 100 million civilizations potentially having invented spacecraft technology. Isn't this truly staggering? The notion that there could be 100 million civilizations capable of launching spacecraft? This speaks volumes about the sheer scale of the universe, given these numbers. This is precisely why most scientists acknowledge the probable existence of extraterrestrial civilizations. Let me summarize our final conclusions. UFOs exist. There are approximately 100 million intelligent civilizations in the universe capable of spacecraft engineering. So does this mean some of the UFOs we've observed might actually contain aliens? That's the ultimate question. To be perfectly honest, that possibility is vanishingly small. Why do so many spacecraft-capable civilizations exist in the universe? Precisely because of the universe's unimaginable vastness. It's this effectively infinite space that allows countless civilizations to coexist. Yet ironically, this same fact actually supports why observed UFOs likely don't contain aliens. Because the probability of civilizations actually encountering each other is infinitesimally small. All life forms have lifespans, correct? Let's assume 100 years as an example. If an intelligent civilization's active period is 100 years for them to encounter Earthlings, even traveling at light speed would require 100 light years of journey. And as we know, nothing can exceed light speed. This would require infinite energy, with light speed as the absolute limit to traverse 100 light years. You know how far light travels in one second, enough to circle Earth seven and a half times. Does any civilization truly exist that can sustain light speed travel for 100 years? The probability of finding a spacecraft building civilization within this 100 light year radius is less than 1%. The chance of detection within 100 light years is similarly below 1%, let alone developing near light speed spacecraft. Those odds are astronomically lower. But the problems don't end there. This technology can't be achieved through intelligence alone. Achieving light speed acceleration and maintaining living occupants requires unimaginable durability. As seen in films like Top Gun, even ordinary humans struggle to withstand 6 to 9 g gravitational forces. Highly trained pilots max out at 6 to 8 g. The answer becomes clear now. Light speed acceleration requires withstanding gravitational forces not of 6 g or 10 g, but tens of thousands times greater. It's simply impossible. Even life forms composed of diamond, currently Earth's hardest known material, or artificially created graphene would be destroyed under such acceleration. They couldn't endure. At light speed acceleration, all atomic bonds maintaining life would break, meaning civilizations would need both light speed spacecraft technology and biological structures capable of withstanding such velocities simultaneously. This represents an astronomically difficult challenge. It makes no logical sense. The possibility of maintaining advanced neural systems or brain structures when all carbon bonds are breaking is effectively zero. Therefore, while countless planets may host life, 
and perhaps 100 million may harbor spacecraft building civilizations, the chance of mutual encounters remains non-existent. For such encounters to occur, we'd need to overturn all currently known scientific laws. Within our existing scientific framework, no civilization could develop the technology for mutual contact. It's fundamentally impossible. Synthesizing our discussion. 1. UFOs exist. 2. Extraterrestrial life exists. 3.00 million civilizations possess spacecraft technology, but they cannot encounter one another. This is my conclusion shared by many scientists. We'll end today's discussion here. Please leave comments for any questions or interesting topics. Likes and subscriptions are appreciated. Goodbye for now. For now. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart.